Hi, my name is Zofia Reik and this is the excerpt from my new book, Born to Climb, From Rock Climbing Pioneers to Olympic Athletes. Chapter 3, Monty Python's Flying Circus, and this is a chapter which uh, describes my early climbing experiences, which I think are potentially the experiences shared by more than just me. Um, I think I was 17. The sun was low, casting long shadows and filling the air with liquid gold. Our intended route had been in sight when we passed by another rock with three climbers sitting at its base, sharing a beer after the day's effort. We waved at them self-consciously. We couldn't make out what they were saying, but it was obvious who was the subject of the talk. Then, one of them theatrically raised his voice to make sure that we heard, Look, Monty Python's flying circus is in town to climb. We walked on as his mate started laughing, the sort of vile laugh typical of a bully's sidekick. I bit my tongue not to shout back obscenities, but ignoring the guys was the only way to show that we didn't think the remark was about us. Suddenly, there was sun in my eyes, and I felt both very angry and very sorry for myself. During those few days spent in the valley, we couldn't help but notice that we were not only the youngest, but also the only all-female party around. Aside from us, we hadn't seen a single person but males leading routes, and the one girl we met each day was pacing back and forth under a rock, her phone glued to her ear as her boyfriend, boyfriend climbed with friends. We were aware of the existence of some strong female climbers in the wider community, but the excitement the magazines showed for their achievements was in no way reflected by the demography of the community as we got to know it. None of us had any doubts that the sole reason for the mockery was that we were girls. We felt betrayed. Had we not proven ourselves, climbing and drinking as hard as we could, we stood in silence as my friend flicked the rope, running all of its length through her hands to ensure no knot would get in the way of belaying. I pulled my harness on and then racked up with five quick draws, four for the bolts in one spare, two screwgate carabiners, two regular ones, two slings and a prusik cord, as per the textbook we had studied religiously the week before. As my partner tightened her, tightened her harness and put the rope through the, a belay device, I dipped my hands in chalk while she carefully examined the figure of eight I had just tied. We didn't exchange any words apart from the ceremony of climbing commands enacted to the letter. Until then, we were spe spellbound to silence, our lips closed tight for fear of all the words that could flow out. Maybe I'd even cry. In our childish minds, probably way more naive than any 16-year-old today, my climb had just become a matter of our girlish pride, a sure way to redeem our souls from the sin of girlhood. It was so serious that until I clipped the first bolt, some three meters of the deck, I forgot to be scared.